Hi everyone, in this video we are going to learn how to install Ubuntu 24.04 for LTS without losing your existing Windows installation. Or simply say we are going to learn how to dual boot Ubuntu with Windows. So let's get started. So the first step we need to do is create an Ubuntu installation medium. For that we need an Ubuntu 24.04 ISO file, then a flash drive with at least 8GB of storage and finally Rufus for writing the ISO file to our flash drive. So first let's download the Ubuntu ISO file, open our browser and search for ubuntu.com. Here is our search result. Click on the link that says https colon double slash ubuntu.com. Now we are on the Ubuntu website. Click on the option that says get Ubuntu. Now we got more options. Click on the download Ubuntu desktop option. Here we go. Scroll down. Here is an option for downloading Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. If you click on it, the download will get started. And also, if you have an unstable internet or may have illimited data, I recommend downloading Ubuntu using a torrent program which can be paused and there will be a less chance for corrupted download. To get a torrent file of Ubuntu, click on the option that says check out our alternative downloads. Now we are on another page. Scroll down and look for BitTorrent. Under the BitTorrent, click on the option that says Ubuntu 24.04 Desktop 64 bit. Soon the torrent file will be downloaded. When the download is finished, open the torrent file in your favorite torrent program. Well, I use Qubit Torrent. If you don't have it, the download link is in description. Also, I only got an ISO file, so I am not going to download it. You should do it. Let's move on to the next step downloading Rufex for writing our ISO to a USB drive or flash drive. Open our browser, search for Rufex, click on the link that says https colon double slash rufex.ie. Now we are in Rufex website scroll down and look for downloads under the download we can see there are a lot of options i'm going to download rofx 4.5 standard 64 bit so let's click on it and the download will get started after finished downloading rofx let's move on to the next step running rofx and writing ubuntu to our usb drive go to the downloads right click on rofx and click on open a user account control window will appear click on yes then wait, Rufex window will come up. Here we can select the drive that we want to write the ISO file which is already selected. Then come down, there is another option called select. Click on it, a file browser window will pop up. Go to the folder where our ISO file is located. Select the ISO and click on open. And also there are a lot of other options available here. Most of the time you don't need to change those things. Under the target system, you can see it supports UEFA and BIOS. Let's start writing the ISO to our USB drive by clicking on start. A new window just come up. It is asking what mode you want to use for writing the ISO to our USB drive. Well, most of the time, writing in ISO image mode works. If it does not work for you, then you should try DD image mode. After selecting the image mode, click on OK. And another window just come up. It says that if you start writing the ISO file, the files that already exist on your USB drive will be gone. So make sure you keep a copy of your important files that located in your USB drive. Click on OK and the writing process will get started. And be patient, wait for a while until the writing process is finished. So the process has been completed. Now we have an Ubuntu installation medium. Let's move on to the next step creating a partition for installing Ubuntu. And also, if you have many partitions in your system, then you can free some partitions for installing Ubuntu. Also, you can create a new partition by stringing existing partition, for example, a C drive. Let's see how we are going to do that. First, we need to open Disk Management tool. So, right click on the Start menu and click on Disk Management. Also, you can open Disk Management tool by searching Create and Format in Start menu search. I don't need two disk management tools, so let's close one. Here we can see the list of partitions of USB drive and internal storage. On internal storage, find a partition that has a lot of space. In my case, it is C drive. So let's select the C drive and right click on it. Click on shrink, wait for a while and a new window will pop up. Here we can see how much space I can take away from C drive although there are more space in C drive than that, that so it's because of some features of windows that are stopping me from taking further anyway i'm not worried because for installing ubuntu all we need is at least 40 gb of storage so here you should type the size of your new partition the unit is in mb so you should type your size in mb remember 
1024 MB is equal to 1 GB. So here the value is around 67,200 which is around 67 GB. So if you want a 40 GB partition just type 40,000. Anyway, I am going to take 67 GB. After typing the size of your new partition, click on the string and then wait for a while. Now we have created a space for creating a new partition which is shown as unallocated and also keep it as unallocated. We will use it for creating a new partition while installing Ubuntu. So let's close the disk management tool and move on to the next steps. So the next step is booting our Ubuntu installation medium. For doing that, we need to change boot priority order in UEFI settings. If your system is BIOS, then you will also find boot priority order in BIOS settings. And then make sure our flash drive or USB drive come first in that order. Let's see how we are going to do that. Although there are a lot of ways you can enter inside UEFI settings. Uh, the easiest way is to restart your computer before showing some log of your computer or laptop press the button on your keyboard that helps entering inside UEFA settings or BIOS settings. Most common keyboard buttons are F1, F2, F10, delete button. In my case it is F1 so I am going to use that. So I restarted my computer and before showing some logo I started pressing the F1 key repeatedly until UEFA settings showed up. Here you can see my UEFA settings. Let's open boot priority order in UEFA settings. In my case, it is located in startup. Let's click on that. Click on boot priority order. Here you can see the boot list. Let's move the USB drive, which is shown as SanDisk, to the top. And also remember, in some systems, you may not have a mouse cursor. Don't worry. You can use a keyboard to change these settings. And information related to those buttons might be shown in user interface of UEFI settings. Also, uh, BIOS as well. Also, it might be a good idea to disable secure boot as well. In some rare cases, secure boot may stop Ubuntu installation from booting. Also, you can re enable the secure boot after installation and uh, check if it works. If it works, then you can leave secure boot on. After making changes, we can save the settings and the system will get rebooted. And after a while, you will see a screen that says new grub and a list of options. Select try or install Ubuntu, press enter. Then wait till the Ubuntu installation window shows up. So finally the Ubuntu installation window is loading. Just wait for a while. Here we go. Choose your language. I will choose English. If you have any different language, you can choose it from here. After choosing language, click on next. Now we are on the accessibility page. There are a lot of tools available here for helping those who may have some physical disabilities. Anyway, I am going to click on next. Here we have to choose our keyboard layout. I am going to choose English. Also you can add more languages later after the installation of Ubuntu so no worries. Let's click on next. Here it is asking if you want to connect to the internet. If you connect to the internet Ubuntu will install some updates, drives and codecs while installing Ubuntu. Even if we did not do it, don't worry we can do those things later after the installation. Not a big deal but still we need an internet. Anyway, let's move on to the next step. Click on the next. Here it is asking if you want to install Ubuntu or just try it without installation. Well, of course we want to install it. So select the install Ubuntu, click on next. How would you like to install Ubuntu? Choose interactive installation and click on next. What apps would you like to install to start with? Well, we can go with the default selection because uh, if you have internet, we can install any apps later. So that is not a big deal. So click on next. Here we can choose third party drives and codecs for installation. To use these options you need to have internet. Well don't worry these things can be done later so again not a big deal. Click on the next. How do you want to install Ubuntu? Just select manual installation and click on next. Now we are on the manual partitioning page. As you can see here we got our USB drive and internal storage. So under the internal storage which shown as NVMe 0N1. In your case it may be different. If your internal storage is, is a hard disk, it might show us HDA. As you can see, there is a huge free space available here, which is around 70 GB. It is the same space we created while we were in inside Windows. In Windows, it is shown as unallocated space, but in Ubuntu, it is shown as free space. I know 
the storage size may look different because windows and ubuntu calculate size in different ways so now we know where our free space is then we can create partitions from that free space so here is the thing you need to know to install ubuntu you need to create two partitions one is swap partition which is used as a virtual ram by ubuntu and a root partition where ubuntu will be installed let's see how we are going to do that set the free space and click on the plus button a new window will pop up so first we are going to create a swap partition let's change the size from mb to gb so it will be easier to understand and also there are a lot of articles about the amount of swap space needed for computers with different ram sizes in reality it depends on your workload anyway if your computer's ram is between 4 gb and 8 gb you should use the double amount of the ram for example if it is 4 gb then you may need 8 gb of swap space and above the 8 gb you may at least need a 4 gb of swap space in here i have a 32 gb ram so i think i may only need 2 gb of swap space after typing swap space change the option use us to swap and then click on ok now we have created a swap partition let's create another partition for installing ubuntu select the free space click on the plus button well i am going to use whatever space available for me well the developers of ubuntu recommend having at least of 25 gb of storage for installing ubuntu then use as s24 then change the mount point to the forward slash which means root directory in linux and click on ok now we have the partitions for installing ubuntu after creating partitions click on next well this page is used for creating a new account which later will be used for logging in to our ubuntu installation so type whatever name you want computer name and username as you wish also type a good password for your account and then click on next here choose your time zone which is depend on where you live i live in india so i choose india then click on next here we can review our choices read it through and check if you have made any mistakes if yes use the back button go back and fix it if you think everything is okay click on the install button soon the installation process will get started and wait for the installation to finish well the installation has finished now we can click on restart to check if the installation is working or not so let's click on restart button after a while a text message will appear that says remove our installation medium and press enter so remove it and press enter then we have to visit our uefa settings again and change boot priority order i will put ubuntu first then windows boot manager in second also in some systems you may not see ubuntu in boot priority order just put your hard disk or internal storage in first position put windows boot manager in second position then i will turn on my secure boot to check if ubuntu will work on that or not anyway and let's save the settings and system will get rebooted now we are in ubuntu grab boot loader here we can select if we want to boot ubuntu or windows let's select ubuntu and press enter and wait for a while here we go now we are in ubuntu's login window set the account type the password and press enter so that's it guys we have successfully installed ubuntu in our system well we can skip these options and in next video we are going to learn about the things that we need to install after installing ubuntu so if you have any doubts please let me know in comment section and thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel